In this video, we're going to have a look inside my Home Assistant. I'll show you my integrations, my add-ons, my automations, and my interfaces. And make sure you stick around, and if you like what you see, hit that subscribe button below, and keep an eye out for more videos. Hi, I'm Will from Will Surrey Tech, and today we're going to be having a look inside my Home Assistant. We'll start off talking about the hardware, and then I'll show you what I'm running, the add-ons, the integrations, and we'll have a look through my configuration, and then we'll have a look at my love legs, and finally move on to my automations. So let's get going. So first of all, it's the hardware. Now I'm running Home Assistant on an old Dell Inspiron i5 desktop computer um, that I had lying around. You may have known that I recently changed over from a Raspberry Pi over to this, uh, and I'm now running on Proxmox inside this Dell computer. And since I've done that, I've had no problems. I'm getting much better speed, much more reliability, and hasn't crashed, let alone corrupted an SD card. So, my add-ons. So if we head over to the supervisor tab, we can see the add-ons I have running. So I've got DuckDNS, this allows me to access my home assistant setup from outside the network. We've got ESP Home, which is used to create your own ESP devices, uh, whether you're using a D1 Mini or a Node MTU or something like that. Node Red, this is where I do all of my automations. We'll have a look in that later. Samba Backup, this allows me to back up Home Assistant directly onto my NAS, which is my network attached storage. Um, so it backs it up off, off the computer. Um, so that's that. Samba Share exposes your Home Assistant document file storage system to the rest of the network so you can just drag and copy files across more easily from Finder or whatever you use on Windows. Terminal and SSH gives me a terminal window and Visual Studio Code I use to edit my YAML files. I had been using the file editor um, before I moved over but since moving over Visual Studio Code is just so much better. It'll autofill It'll, it's easier to look at, you can have multiple tabs open, etc. So I would recommend. Right. So let's start off looking at my configuration. So since I last did this video, um, a lot has changed in Home Assistant. And actually, you don't need the configuration for much anymore. So I'm using configuration for a few a few platforms that haven't moved away from YAML and moved over to the interface for or GUI for integration. Um, we've got some we've got some basic bits here. This includes our themes. Um, we've got Sonoff. I've got a dimmer switch in the kitchen, uh, and that's on Sonoff, so that uses that integration. Evo Home, uh, my heating system, Honeywell Evo Home, that requires you to configure it here. I've got my Amcrest doorbell, that integrates through this as well. And then everything else I link out to other files, which you can you can see labeled down the side. So if we look at groups, we have nothing. If we look at our input booleans, I've got a number of input booleans for various different things. I'm trying to create automation overrides so I can manually turn them on and off uh, within the Lovelace, um, but I haven't really got very far with that. I don't really use them anyway. Um, we've got some scenes for various different things. We've got some states, uh, so to turn, to trigger things basically that aren't scenes. Um, we've got some occupancy sensors, so these are technically sensors but I have them as input booleans so I can manually toggle them if the automation hasn't worked. And then I've got a couple of test ones. Now these are great because this means I don't have to create new input booleans every time I want to just try something out. So I've just got a couple of test input booleans that I can just trigger easily and, and connect to whatever. Input date time, I'm using for to set my alarm time as a, as a time, and for my social hours, the start and end of my social hours. Check out that video uh, where I show you how you can create social hours and then you only get notified inside of those sociable hours so you're not getting battery notifications through the night. Input number, I'm using this currently for my workout duration in the morning so it knows how long I'm going to be working out for before it needs to turn the music on, for example. Input select. Now I've got this for my heating boost uh, automation, so that's every room there. And I've also got it for every room to host my follow me music automation. Again, check out both those videos. Lights. 
So we've got Flux LED, which is a cheap Magic Home LED driver. And then I've got a lot of lighting groups. Um, now I set these up thinking it would be much easier to run with light groups in that I can turn on a light group and it will automatically turn, you know, three or more or whatever on. And I can only have to edit it here if I put a new light into that space and not have to change all my automations. Um, but I'm currently finding that in the light groups, if you trigger a light group, then sometimes it will only trigger like one of the lights in the group on and then it will assume it's on, but it's all not on. Um, so I need to have a look into that. Don't have any scenes. So we've got a few scripts. These are all to activate hue scenes. Um, so I've set various scenes in the hue app. Uh, it's just a bit easier. And then I can trigger them through a script in Home Assistant. And last of all, we've got sensors. Quite a few sensors. Um, we've got some system monitor date, time, all of the useful stuff. And then we've got a lot of platform sensors or a few average sensors. So in here, I've got a few different temperature sensors in the room uh, so I can average them out. And then we've got a lot of template sensors, uh, which allows us to basically extract attributes from an entity and put it into its own entity. Um, and that is it for my configuration file. So let's head over to the configuration tab and have a look at my integrations. So we have got ESP Home, got a couple of devices there. We'll have a look in the ESP Home tab later. Uh, the Fire Tablet, which is running fully Kiosk Browser, and that gives me a number of entities um, for various different things, some more useful than others. Being able to turn the screen on and off, being able to play through the media player is great, knowing it's plugged in and it's got battery, also very useful. We've got Google Cast, which is the TV in my sitting room. Uh, we've got Hacks, which we'll have a look into later. Supervisor gives you quite a lot of stuff for the add-ons. Obviously got the weather, my phone app, Philips Hue. Most of the lights in this house are Philips Hue. That is slowly changing, um, but most of them are Hue and I love Hue, it's great. It does exactly what it's meant to. Uh, we've got Pi-hole, which is running my DNS server as well as my DHCP server and doing various ad blocking. Got SkyQ, which isn't connected at the moment, not sure why. Uh, we've got Sonos. Again, all of my speakers in the house are Sonos devices. Great, great speakers, love them, integrate very well, nice and easy to group and ungroup. Got a speed test for the internet. Spotify, which also isn't working, but I don't really use it. It doesn't really give me much capability. We've got my Synology NAS. Nice to keep track of what's going on on the NAS in terms of file space temperatures, that sort of thing. Uh, and also it gives me, and also I've, I'm using my NAS as a surveillance station, as an NVR. So it exposes the cameras through the NAS onto Home Assistant. We've got a couple of WLED nodes. Uh, I'm looking to add a few more here, but, but they're great. Love WLED running on a Wemos D1 Mini. And then we've got Zigbee. I'm using Conbi 2 uh, stick, USB stick on a USB extender to keep it away from all my network shenanigans. And inside here, we've got a selection of Zigbee stuff. Um, we've got door sensors, we've got motion sensors from various different brands, Philips, Akara, Sonoff, generic stuff. Um, we've got some switches also from Akara. So I've got a two gang switch and a one gang switch um, and also a switch module, which hides behind the real switch uh, from Akara and they are great. So let's have a look in Hacks. Well, you've seen some of what Hacks is running for me. So we've got Sonoff, as I said earlier, we've got the fully kiosk browser, we've got the SkyQ, and we've got the Alexa Media Player. Again, I'm not really using this at the moment. Um, I may do soon, but I don't have a need at the moment. I was using it as a for text-to-speech uh, as part of my alarm and whatever. Um, but haven't really got it much used in much else, so I haven't really set it up properly recently. And then in the front end, we've got a lot of lovely cards. The Kibit theme is my favourite theme at the moment. Uh, very nice gradient background, you'll see it in a minute. Paper buttons row allows you to put a few buttons in a row on a card, like in an entities card. Uh, mini media player, fantastic. Integrates so well with Sonos, you can group, ungroup, select, Media, great. Mini graph card, same principle, it's great. So many customizability stuffs. 
a banner card, which I'm using for my runes dashboard. You'll see that in a minute. Vertical stacking card, very useful, uh, as is the layout card and card tools, loads in that. Fold entity row, that allows you to fold your cards so you've got kind of got a drop down menu, which is nice. Slider entity row allows you to add sliders to your entities. And the search card is the best thing ever. I feel like I've said that a lot. It allows you to just search with text. Okay, now we're going to have a look at a couple of my Lovelace dashboards. So these are the two that I'm currently using quite a lot, or predominantly at the moment. We've got my room dashboard. Um, I'm wanting to make this a bit prettier because it doesn't quite fit on a on my tablet very well. Um, but this is kind of an overview of the house. You can see which the main scenes are running. And then you've got a banner card here. And each card has got the lights, maybe another state, temperature, current temperature, the set temperature, the occupancy, and the media player that's playing. Um, so that's great. And then when you click on it, you can go into a room and see more things, you know, actually have a climate card. This is the mini media player card where you can select your various things in group speakers. I've got my lighting. This is the paper buttons row. Um, so you've got little buttons at the top of the entities card and then my little sleep panel and then some sensors in the room. And the same for all my other rooms. And then we've got the type based Lovelace, so Lovelace group based on type. And in here, so I've split it across the top based on what type of sensor it is. Um, so we start off with lighting and you can see the fold entities row here uh, and the slider card and the paper buttons card. So you've got all in one place, which is great. And then I've got media players, all of them in one place, heating in one place. These are all of my inputs. I got fed up having loads of inputs and I wasn't quite sure what state they're in or sometimes I accidentally leave a state on or an input on while I was playing with it um, and forget to turn it off and then it, because it was new I hadn't put it into a dashboard properly so this is just everywhere that I've got manual control over things. We've then got cameras and we've got uh, the network status so this is my NAS stuff and temperature speed then we've got some interfaces uh, that I've got so I've got my fire tablet running fully kiosk browser we've got a couple of pithy devices and then I'm just starting on a batteries display as well. Nothing pretty here, um, but it does the job and it's just got everything in one place. And lastly, we should probably have a look at my automations. So, as I said, it's all inside Node-RED. I try to split it by type along the top. That kind of works. Um, I would definitely recommend splitting it. Uh, how you split it is up to you. And then I would definitely recommend la labeling things and stuff as well. So this is my test page. Um, I keep in here, I've got a selection of testy things. I've got some timestamps. I've got some uh, debugging nodes ready to go. And then once I'm happy with something, I'll move it into, a right, in the, into the right tab. In my lighting tab, I've got various automations. Um, so this one I'm not using at the moment. The automation is off. We've got an entrance motion light. Um, so that is basically just motion sensor turns the light on. If there's no motion, it turns off. Got nighttime P, so if I get up at night, uh, then it will turn the hall off on for me. We've got some lighting based on occupancy. So if the occupancy is on and it's not dinner and it, et cetera, then it will turn the light to a state based on the time. And the same in the sitting room if the TV is off, because if the TV is on and it suddenly detects me, I don't want it to turn the light on. Um, and again, in here, in here, I've got a little test light. So if the occupancy goes off when I'm still in here, it'll actually turn off one of the lights first. And then I'll have 20 seconds to kind of wave my arms around and flail until it detects motion. And then it'll either turn the lights on or it'll turn the lights off if there was no motion. And the same happens in the bedroom. We've also got on the next tab is scenes. So in here is my sleep scene. This is a big one. Um, turning everything off, sorting out the heating, sorting out the lights, sorting out the music. We've got a cooking scene, um, which does, which sets up the lights and the music if I'm cooking. Then we've got a dinner scene, does the same principle. Uh, but if uh, a retiring scene for after dinner, the alarm in the morning, check out my video on that. Uh, now using the time node, because that is much easier than the function node that I was using. And that wakes me up in the morning with a gradual delay, etc. 
We've also got a work in progress uh, for setting the alarm. Haven't got that working, um, but was hoping to do that based on the calendar entries. It just got very complicated very quickly. Um, and we've got a morning scene, which is using the workout duration, which I mentioned earlier, to set the delay variable before it plays the music. And that's also doing uh, media source on the TV, as well as turning the temperature on, turning the lights on, that kind of thing. We've got a few heating based scenes. So at midnight, it'll turn the heating off. Uh, it, we've got the heating boost scene. Check out the video on that. And we've got my outdoor heater shut off, which I don't use in this house because I don't have an outdoor heater. Um, but I had that. So if I had guests, it would turn off after three hours after being turned on. If I didn't, it would turn off after an hour, just so I didn't accidentally leave it on overnight. In iOS, we've got a few triggers from actions uh, based on home, home screen widgets. And we've got a notification widget here as well. And then occupancy, which is where most of the magic happens. Uh, check out my video on occupancy, uh, but basically it uses the combination of a motion sensor and a door sensor to tell if someone's in the room. And I've got that for obviously three rooms plus the kitchen. And then in media, we've got my follow me music, which is an automation I've just set up where the music will follow you around the house basically. It'll mute and unmute based on the occupancy of the room. Check out the video on that. So that is the inside of my home assistant. No smokes and mirrors. This is the one that I run all the time. Um, I just thought I'd give you a, an insight into what I've got running in my home. And hopefully that might give you some ideas on what you might want to do to your system. So there we go. Home assistant through and through, I suppose. Make sure you hit that subscribe button below and click the bell icon to find out more about My Smart Tech and how you can build yourself the ultimate smart home.